morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second and final day of the National Education Conclave 2021. This initiative has been taken by Heartfulness Education Trust to promote heart-centered approach towards university education. I would once again like to extend our heartfelt welcome and gratitude to all the dignitaries, educationists, students and other guests who have joined us for this landmark event. The education of the mind without the education of the heart is no education at all. And especially in today's scenario, it is extremely essential for the youth to delve deeper into the wisdom and guidance of the heart to lead a more holistic and balanced life. Our topic of discussion for this session is inspiring socio-emotional learning through university education. Like yesterday, we have two sessions today packed with immensely insightful and exciting speakers, panel discussions, awards, music performances, audience quizzes, and also a few surprises. So let's kick start the day by welcoming our first keynote speaker. I would like to request Mr. Sanjay Bhatia, Upalloki Yukta of Maharashtra to welcome and introduce our keynote speaker. Mr. Sanjay Bhatia. It's a proud privilege for me to introduce Honorable Dr. R.A. Mashelkarji. Uh, Shri Mashelkar, the National Research Professor, has been the Director General of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research chairman of National Innovation Foundation, as also the president of Indian National Science Academy, Global Research Alliance, and Institute of Chemical Engineers, UK. In recognition of his pioneering research contributions in polymer science and engineering, he has been honored as a fellow of Royal Society Foreign Fellow of U.S. National Academy of Science as also Engineering Foreign Associate of American Academy of Arts and Science and Fellow of U.S. National Academy of Inventors. 44 universities from around the world have honored him with honorary doctorates. The 60 plus awards won by him include the prestigious Tuas Lenovo Science Prize, Business Week USA Award of Stars of Asia and JRD Tata Corporate Leadership Award. Dr. Meshelkar, who was a member of the Scientific Advisory Council to the Prime Minister for over 30 years, has been honored with Padam Shri, Padam Bhushan, and Padam Vibhushan, three of the highest civilian honors. So this is Dr. Mashelkar for you. Uh, over to Dr. Mashelkar. Thank you. I wish to begin by thanking the Heartfulness Education Trust for organizing the National Education Conclave 2021 to promote a great cause, to promote the heart-centered and holistic approach in the university education, which to my mind is an urgent need of the hour. I'm grateful for your invitation to me personally to participate in this wonderful meeting of some of the best minds and thought leaders of our nation. I strongly feel that reimagining university education with a heart-centered approach is a great idea. I'm particularly happy to have the honor of giving a keynote address on a very important component of national education policy, namely self-development through education, and more specifically on socioeconomic and social emotional learning through university education. We talked about right to education. But what is more important 
is the right way of education and right education. To me, the right education is the one that is balanced, the one that is holistic, one that aims at drawing the full force of compassion in the heart, indeed, one that helps us achieve heartfulness in each action that we take. Let's remember that education of the heart is at the heart of true education. Let us also remember that education of the mind without the education of the heart is no education at all. So I firmly believe that heartfulness matters. I must at the outset express my great admiration towards uh, Rivier Daji, a true guru, I would say, who taught us the heartfulness way of life. I've been following Daji. I have found Daji's thoughts most inspiring. Their breadth is as large as their depth. These are on designing one's destiny, making a mark on one's spiritual future, the evolution of consciousness, the journey from thinking to feeling and beyond, fine tuning the heart to the mind, mastering one's emotions, achieving one's potential, excelling both material and spiritual, etc. etc. I mean, these are most valuable. I watched with admiration how Daji launched a suit of educational initiatives to bring the basic life skills of emotional well being to the teachers and students of India. We indeed need education that develops emotional as well as social intelligence. One that helps in development of the inner being, which means beside the body and mind, it includes soul too. Swami Vivekananda had said, spirituality deals with the nature of soul, a soul that is absolute and the ultimate truth. Our students must learn to do physical journeys to distant lands, but also the inner journey to the inner lands to discover inner peace and then expanding the capability to live, to love and to learn. See, when it comes to sustainable development goals for humanity, we always swear by the necessity of meeting of UN's 17 sustainable goals, SDGs, don't we? But when we move from humanity, the goals for humanity, to goals for a human being, we need to swear by UN nine values for modern living, which include truth and wisdom, love and compassion, creativity and appreciation, peace and justice, sustainable human development, harmony with nature, global unity, and finally, global spirituality. Let's come to the last point, spirituality. You know, when uh, you look at uh, spirituality, uh, I uh, 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 remembering uh, uh, something uh, that uh, just struck me uh, when the famous Time magazine shows the person of the 20th century. You know, it was it was Albert Einstein, perhaps one of the greatest scientists ever. And what did the greatest scientist ever have to say? He said. Everyone who is seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of universe, a spirit vastly superior to that of man, and one in the face of which we, our modest powers, must feel humble. These were great words. But Einstein himself revered Mahatma Gandhi and said about him, you will remember, generations to come will scarce believe that such a one as this ever in flesh and blood walked upon this earth. And then what did Mahatma Gandhi himself say? He said, if both science and spirituality go hand in hand, then one can create heaven on holy earth. So both Einstein and Mahatma Gandhi believed in the power of spirituality. We must understand that spiritual experience is an experience of aliveness of mind and body as a unity. The experience of unity translates not only the separation of mind and body, but also the separation of self and the whole world. Spirituality deals with the nature of soul, a soul that is absolute and ultimate truth, as we said earlier. Spirituality is an inner journey to discover inner peace and is all about expanding our capability to live, love and learn, as I said earlier. So we have to realize that the knowledge of the inner world and spiritual constitution of man will give him more mastery over its own life. 
Spirituality will help man to discover inner strength and vitality to face all the challenges in life like we are facing uh, in this uh, pandemic. It is uh, also evident to me that this notion of spirituality is very consistent with the notion of the embodied mind that is now being developed in cognitive science. And finally, the big picture is that spiritual values are creative and constructive mechanisms working to stabilize the society, to prevent its destruction, and therefore compassion, kindness, sympathy, and caring are some of those spiritual values that drive humanity in its basic form, and that must become the fundamentals in our education. Coming back to heartfulness, we will say, when should heartfulness learning start? At what stage? I personally believe that we need to inculcate these in the children right when they are young and impressionable and therefore moldable. So they must start when the minds are fresh and open and not clutter by experiences. That is why I like the offerings of the heartfulness institutions. For example, the educational initiatives, I've seen them, to enhance cognitive functioning among children with the objective of improving personal excellence. I'm sure this will go a long way to creating brighter minds. The special curriculum that is developed to inculcate spiritual values in children will lead them to the path of really having enlightened models uh, minds as they move forward. Similarity, uh, similarly, I like the science and spirituality clubs across colleges, across educational institutions that they have initiated uh, that will be immensely helpful in self-development. I like particularly the emphasis on meditation that heartfulness uh, institutions give. Uh, of course, uh, making meditation mainstream is a challenge. And that is where I believe the heartfulness meditation that comes in because it is scientifically proven to facilitate positive psychological and neurophysiological uh, outcomes. So I like this uh, 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 heartfulness uh, encouraging a sincere inquiry based approach to meditation. And that is again where I must give credit to Rivier Daji that he has demystified meditation by inviting all newcomers to adopt a scientific method of personal experience, uh, ensuring step-by-step -step systematic inner development. Finally, we'll say, I'm a scientist, and uh, a scientist is supposed to give an equation. You didn't mention about any equation at all. So I'll not disappoint you. I'll, I'll uh, go with an equation. So I'll tell you a little story, and I'll close my talk. The story is that there was a discussion among scientists about what is the most powerful equation that was ever created by scientists. So somebody said, of course, it is uh, Newton's law of uh, motion, the second law, uh, F equal to MA, force equal to mass into acceleration. Then somebody said, no, 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 that is not the most powerful law. It is E equal to MC square, Einstein is energy, M is mass, and C is the velocity of light. And then I was uh, keeping quiet, you know, I was not participating at all, I was just listening. So somebody came to me and he said, uh, uh, but you didn't say anything, what do you think? Uh, who is uh, greater, Newton or Einstein? I said, none of them, not Newton, not Einstein. The most powerful equation is not Newton, is not Einstein's, it is E equal to F. So they were puzzled. They said, what is E, what is F? I said, E is education and F is future. Education is equal to future. And now, you know, I must modify that by saying that, yes, this equation is universal and eternal. Of course, if there is no education, there is no future, no future for the individual, no future for the nation. But looking at the big picture, it becomes very, very clear that education of the heart is, a, is at the heart of education. And realizing and actualizing this education is going to be the real future of India. And more correctly, I would say not India, but Bharat. And even more correctly, I would say not just Bharat, but Atmanirbhar Bharat, a great clarion call that has been given by our Prime Minister. And even more correctly, I would say, not just Atmanirbhar Bharat, but Atmanirbhar Bharat with Atma Vishwas, with 
आत्म सम्मान थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू डॉक्टर मिशेलकर दैट वॉज इंडीड अ वेरी इंकरेजिंग थॉट यूर इन साइट्स ऑन डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग ह्यूमैनिटी एंड ह्यूमन बींग्स एंड द आइडिया ऑफ नाइन गोल्स विल बेनिफिट अस ऑल now in our journey of redefining reinventing and reimagining education with a heart centered approach we have been ardently supported by vice chancellors deans principals faculty members students and various other stakeholders of the education system i would like to share with you some of their experiences through the following testimonials It's a wonderful day today. We are celebrating the National uh, Education Conclave organized by the Heartfulness Institute 2021. I am a very proud participant of this particular uh, program as our institutions spread over a uh, 48 number consisting of schools colleges engineering colleges educational institutions colleges of uh, uh, all of the branches i'm very proud to be a participant in this grand program because uh, we are associated with the heartfulness institute right from uh, 2014 and from then onwards the journey was a wonderful one and uh, we have introduced the same in our schools colleges colleges of higher education colleges of education and we sought to it that the entire teaching and the non teaching and uh, students of our uh, institutions spread over 48 in number participate in this program and which has resulted in a very positive uh, environment all around today students are and parents are perplexed where they are worried because of the pandemic because of the various uh, uh, problems that they are facing uh, the youth the older people the frontline workers the everybody is suffering from mental health and students are sitting at home the online education has contributed to a great extent but still there is always uh, room for improvement and uh, when we were practicing this heartfulness meditation in our schools and when we introduced in our schools it had a very wonderful impact very great impact say for example in a school in the saini one of our schools when we introduced we found the students very violent in their uh, uh, in their uh, morning uh, rituals and uh, we introduced along with the prayer the meditation the technique of meditation and uh, therefore there was a total change in their personality throughout even in our engineering college we have started this heartfulness meditation program in the beginning of the lectures so that we found that the students have been coming on time to classes and uh, it was very beneficial to them that is as directed by them likewise in our bed colleges in our uh, teacher training program and everywhere all the institutions about 30000 students are being trained mentally and uh, physically uh, to practice artful meditation we are also very proud sri kamlesh patel has taken this message of heartfulness meditation to all over the world and uh, we thank him for uh, his wonderful achievements
congratulate the organizers of this program to, for, for organizing this wonderful event, great event. And I hope in the years to come, this will come as a learning resource for all the students all over the country. And this movement will create very positive impact in the minds and hearts of children. I thank the organizers of this program. A wonderful uh, experience and uh, wish you all the best for the future of our country. Thank you. Friends, it's now time to welcome our next keynote speaker. We're privileged to have amongst us Professor Anil Dattatreya Sahasrabuddhe, Chairman of All India Council for Technical Education, AICTE, a Professor of Mechanical Engineering from IIT Guwahati. Professor Sahasrabuddhe has held several important academic research and administrative positions at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, Tata Consulting Engineers, Northeastern Regional Institute of Science and Technology, and many more. He has taken several new initiatives for academic, curricular, and co-curricular activities, entrepreneurship, research, and good governance. He has been bestowed with several awards, which include Maha Entrepreneur Award 2011 of Praj Industries, Jeevan Gaurav Puraskar Lifetime Achievement Award from MIT World Peace University, Mahatma Gandhi Leadership Award from Indian Achievers Forum, and CSIR Times in 2019. Without further ado, I warmly welcome Dr. Anil Sahasrabuddhe to share with us a few insights. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Today, we are in the midst of uh, a very important launch of uh, Heartfulness Institute. In the same time when the new national education policy has been announced, I think this is probably coincidence. The first policy came in 1968 after independence, then 86. There was some uh, revision in the year 1992, but after 34 long years, the new policy, which is called as NEP 2020, is in place. But there are major changes which have happened in this policy in terms of uh, making it very clear that the university education, the higher education, must be multidisciplinary. But even right from school time, it is focused on multidisciplinary nature of education. And this reminds me of uh, Swami Vivekananda, who had said that education is nothing but perfection already in man. That means we are going to bring out that perfection, that excellence, which is already existing in man. And how can it be brought out? That can be only brought out when students get an opportunity to taste every bit of different variety of education in terms of subjects, whether it is in terms of social science, whether it is basic science, maybe applied science, engineering, technology, uh, medicine, law, sociology, psychology, and then a person decides where does he fit in, what are his tastes, what is his intrinsic character, what is his DNA, and then probably he will be able to excel in the field in which he is truly interested. And that's why this particular new education policy talks about multidisciplinary universities, research intensive and teaching intensive universities. It also talks about what is known as exit and entry system. That means a student after joining a particular program feels that he is not fit for that or there are some difficulties in family, he can quit it in between, you know, even though the program at undergraduate level is four years, after two years he decides to go out, he can get a certificate or a diploma and then go out of the system. And then those credits which he has earned, he can keep it in his credit, it's like bank. And then when he wants to use it again, he can come back to the same institute or he can go to another institute immediately or later and then use those credits for his particular graduation. I think these are very, very sweeping changes which are there. But other aspects which are also talked about in this policy is we have been always concentrating often on IQ, how intelligent a student is based on 
a routine examination which is carried out in terms of uh, what we call rote learning um, methodology. But moving away from that, how we can encourage students to be more creative in terms of asking them questions in a manner that whether they have understood the subject, whether they are able to apply it to some practical applications, can they analyze the data, can they synthesize the, the problem and then the solutions, can they be innovative, creative, all of these elements are required to be there in the in the examination system itself and therefore it also talks about examination system. So evaluation of the student is going to be on a different yardstick and when we do all of this we should realize that uh, one of the significant things which every human being wants is happiness and if this happiness has to come you cannot be alone happy unless you make others happy. So your surroundings have to be happy only then you can be happy and that is where this uh, program which is being launched by Heartfulness Institute Heartfulness uh, program is going to be very, very significant in the light of this new education policy. It also talks about uh, the policy has uh, in, inbuilt what is known as Indian knowledge systems. We have uh, our Bharatiya Gyan Parampara. What is it all about? In the ancient times from about 5,000, 7,000 years ago, from the starting of uh, Gurukula system to the universities like uh, Takshila and Nalanda, which came into existence in India, there were other universities as well. We often talk about only Nalanda, Takshila, Vikramsila, but there are several other such universities. When the world did not have the concept of university, we had universities and people from all across the globe used to come. Then what was that quality of education? What was being imparted during that time? I think certainly it was heartfulness content must be there. That is why we were able to attract people from all across the globe. And one of the key factors was the guru, that is the teacher. So the way teacher behaved with the students, the way he, he interacted with the students and how practical experiential learning was taking place in the process, whether you call in the today's terminology empathy or what we call as emotional quotient, it was all embedded directly or indirectly in the system of education that was being imparted. So the new education policy is trying to reinvent what existed thousands of years ago in the form of uh, what we call as Indian knowledge systems also to be taught right from primary school to the high school to the college education and the university education. And that is where a big change will happen and a heart to heart uh, connection, whether it is between the teacher and the students or between student to students. And that is where the school education is also transformed from the present uh, 10 plus 2 system into 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system where the first five years start from at the age of three itself instead of at the age of six. Thereby, in those five years, there is no tension in the minds of the students in terms of learning. They are absolutely free. And most of the teaching learning takes place not by writing, reading, but more by stories, by activities, by going out, by seeing the nature, by practicing agriculture, gardening, many uh, small, small items whereby student on his own or on her own starts learning from the teacher and also multilingual. You know, the child at the age of some three to say 10 to 12 can uh, learn as many languages as possible. So there is no problem about whether there should be three languages or two languages. It is more the better, more the merrier. I think that is the philosophy through storytelling, through games, through a lot of activities. I think this is possible to be achieved. So that is what it does. And then after the class six, present class six I'm talking about, that means that five plus three, after he has learned or she has learned basic reading, writing skills, there will be a lot of uh, other skills there, that is hands-on skills, maybe in terms of uh, carpentry, maybe in terms of pottery, in terms of painting, and I think different types of uh, skill sets students can start learning at that early age. And uh, also probably to tomorrow, there will be also computer programming, artificial intelligence, which are absolutely modern. On one side, we have the ancient skills, which are existing for quite some time, to the most modern skills, which are tools which are used today by the job creators and the new jobs are in those domains. They are also being taught. I think in this way, if a student comes to the higher education after the 12th standard, maybe in arts, commerce, science, engineering, any of the domains, I think he is fully prepared to take on the life, life as a exercise for him to learn lifelong. I think that is where very important changes are going to happen in the whole perspective of the education itself. And this is where when a, such a student comes, there will be less difference between different domains of students from the rich and poor, from 
the people who have come from the rural and urban areas, those who have come from English medium schools to the, the, the local language or the mother tongue schools from where the students have come, they will all be probably be achieving the same level of excellence and they will have the same level of confidence, student induction program and a course called Universal Human Values. And this is where heartfulness, which you are talking about, is already embedded in terms of how do we train students in this aspect. Uh, basically, starting with the day uh, where there is no classroom exercise, there is no lecture, but take the students to the field, you know, ground, and uh, first uh, few hours uh, uh, spending them in the in the playground, whether it is exercise, games, yoga, meditation, and then come back after breakfast. Huge number of uh, deliberations, discussions throughout three weeks, where a lot of topics are debated, discussed. Students will open up. They may start speaking in their respective languages, gradually pick up other languages also if they don't know. And then uh, many of them are made to have such an interaction where they start understanding that each one has his own strength. What I said in terms of Swami Vivekananda's teachings, that each one is uh, divine and he has some perfection already in him. And that means someone is good in some experimental work, someone is good in theoretical, someone is good in uh, hands-on uh, experience, what people are trying to gather through the skills. Someone else is able to do mathematics well. Someone is good in history. Someone is good in music. So as soon as they realize that different individuals have different capabilities and that if we have to go out in the life, in, in the life outside the educational institutions, then naturally they'll have to combine the skill sets of each other. They have to collaborate. They have to start learning from each other. And instead of uh, mere computation, which anyway exists, but how we can collaborate, by how we can cooperate with each other. And that philosophy is embedded. Teachers can innovate in terms of uh, the way of teaching. Uh, it is not necessary that only lecture-based teaching is the only teaching methodology. There are various pedagogical methods, whether it is experiential learning, whether it is taking students outside to the industry in terms of internship, whether it is making them to do work on their own by project-based learning, uh, activity-based learning. There are hundreds of different ways of doing teaching learning and every teacher has has this uh, initiative of uh, creating that kind of an atmosphere in an institute that no one is left out so none of the students in the classroom should feel that this education is being imparted to only some elite people but everyone is taken care of i think that is where heartfulness comes in i think this heartfulness first should be created in the faculty members and only then it will get created in the students and so your institute whatever program they are being conducted. It should be not only for students, but there must be short-term programs for faculty members as well. And faculty training is also given great emphasis in this new education policy. Uh, one side, technology. Technology enabled learning. That is one T. Other T is teacher effectiveness, teacher training. That is also given emphasis. I think this, what we are doing already, is probably going to be expanded to other domains of education. That means in not only the uh, colleges like arts, commerce, science, medicine, law. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the entire policy will then deliver what is desired to be not only Atmanirbhar Bharat on one side, but uh, our philosophy of Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam or uh, the, the Sarve Janaha Sukhino Bhavantu that we want the whole world to be happy. This will happen from heart to heart connection, not by mind, not by the brain, but in terms of uh, the activities which are both right brain left brain oriented and that's why very critical people will be generated who will be able to do all of this there are uh, programs which we have already launched which i said they are the seeds actually and once uh, a person starts uh, taking them seriously there is a transformation a big ticket change that starts happening and many of these programs i would like to mention that our uh, universal human values program which is student induction program for which we are faculty training is going on. It's a full five days program. It starts in the morning uh, of Monday and ends on fri uh, Friday evening. This program is based on not giving any direction. Uh, we only say a statement, you know, proposal. And we ask them questions. How do you deal with this situation? And we have found that the intrinsic feeling of every human being is almost innately the same. 90% of the answers are all related with heart-to-heart -heart content, heart-to-heart -heart connection, how we can become empathetic, how we can become you know, better social uh, beings, how social connect is important, 
and that's why more than iq how social quotient as well as spiritual quotient is important comes out of them not by giving the lectures i think that is wonderful emotional quotient development including even spiritual and social quotient development is already happening through this particular program uh, unfortunately uh, we are starting at a age when they are uh, 18 plus that means after the 12th standard they are coming into the technical education our proposal is uh, since we are already starting the new education policy with our 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system if this starts from in fact forget about the schools right from our families and in fact uh, right parenting is also important if you are able to adopt this right from our homes the mother is the first teacher uh, the child right in the first year is not talking to anyone other than the mother the touch yeah. you know the touch of the hand of the mother you know that is the only thing that child understand gradually the father the brother sister other relatives and it is watching here and there and gradually learning and and, and through that mechanism even in the childhood please experience this that if you tell a child that this is uh, uh, the candle which is burning if you touch the hand you, your hand will fingers will get burnt okay. it will not listen to you uh, in that moment it will agree because it is small child and mother may beat me or something like that but uh, when you are not there it will go and touch and uh, find out that it really burns and, and then it believes the mother you know everything what teacher says what, what uh, mother or father says is right i think that is where the education in terms of uh, heartfulness what you are talking about social quotient emotional quotient need to be developed right from the childhood from the homes and then of course in the school and then high school then probably our job is done actually in the high see the age at which they come it is much difficult but we have found despite that in this adolescent age you know 16 17 to 20 uh, this is still a moldable age uh, if you cross that limit of 20 21 probably it becomes more and more difficult changing the attitude of the people at our age is difficult whatever i feel i, I i'm right is philosophy yes. which we are adopting so i think uh, what we are doing through this three week induction program i'm deliberately repeatedly saying that that is the seed which is going to be sown which will sprout into a big tree and the fruits of that will be available for the entire society to reap later thank, thank you, you and god bless you thank you sir namaskar thank you on behalf of the entire heartfulness family i would like to thank professor anil sahasrabuddhe for his valuable time and support towards our cause Also thank you so much sir for sharing your experiences and all your initiatives that you have taken for college and university students they are highly motivating and we sincerely thank you on behalf of heartfulness education trust now let's talk about the next program which is about our youth as you all know the backbone of every state and every nation is our youth with their immense potential and never ending energy they can scale every height and achieve almost the impossible all they need is a little bit of encouragement a, a bit of faith this is a global initiative to awaken the present generation and the generations to come to realize their full potential Today it's my immense pleasure to welcome amongst us one of our youth representatives Miss Bhavya Krishnan who will share with us the exciting in initiative that we hope to launch as part of this national conclave Miss Bhavya Krishnan please join us Thank you Mr Krishnan for such a warm introduction Now we have reached the time to unveil yet another offering of Heartful Campus. An offering that is driven by the youth and for the youth. It is a platform for youth to interact with each other and exchange ideas, to unite and uplift the collective consciousness of youth from all across the globe. It is an opportunity for us to come together to unleash the unlimited potential of the youth. by having a platform to really connect to students from across the globe share experiences solve problems we can come together in solidarity 
to uncover individual and thereby the collective pool of talent. It is a privilege and a joy for me to introduce to you Global Youth Communities. Hi everyone, I am Saraswati. And I am Aditya. Thank you so much for tuning in to our Heartful Campus launch. Infinite Youth is a community of young and like-minded people who constantly strive to become the best version of themselves. Through our various initiatives and practices, we aim to foster compassion, brotherhood and love to redesign young minds towards attaining a sustainable future. Within Infinite Youth Global Community, we have engaging and interactive interest-based groups such as Holistic Wellness, Design of Leadership, Intuition and Artist, Science and Spirituality, Sustainable Development Impact, Heartful Career and our Lighthouse. Each of these interest-based groups have a range of events, web posts, webinars, training programs and other interactive tools that facilitate the inspiration and the motivation that young minds are looking for. A diverse global community invites all you wonderful youth to join us in this journey of hope, light and courage. The future is ours. Let's unleash our infinite potential together. levels of the literature with my youth group participation. During that time period, I felt more connected to the three M's, my master, mission and the method. Learned a lot of new things. I completely had to step out of my comfort zone and do things that I had never done before. But the team gave me the confidence and stood by me at all times. I completely loved this journey and given a chance, I would like to be a volunteer of this. Thank you. Youth 2.0 has been this loving and supportive community that has given me the opportunity to meet and connect with wonderful people from different parts of the world um, who have diverse, amazing ideas and uh, all of us are working together for a beautiful common purpose. Uh, the experience has been wonderful. It has also given me the uh, inspiration to work on myself and work on reinventing myself. Youth 2.0 is a family for me. We belong to different backgrounds, uh, we speak different languages, but despite our differences, we are all connected within. Thank you to Youth 2.0 for letting me in the team and working with them was so much fun. It not just helped me to connect with others, but also to understand myself better and I worked on my not so good quality. Youth 2.0 has given me a lot in life. Um, it's been an amazing platform where I've made 
the best of friendships um i've met what's going to be the best version of myself i've become more confident and um i've been able to tap into skills and capabilities that i never believed that i had and i think it's allowed me to dream big um youth 2.0 for me has been a pillar in my life and i'm very grateful for it i'm rishali from indonesia and volunteering for this organization has been my privilege it's brought me closer to myself and i've met some of the best people in the world it's given me a chance to explore and go within find my inner talents and it's allowed me to go through this inner refinement process where i've become a better person i've understood the meaning of service and i now know what it's like to be a volunteer for such a fabulous organization i can't wait to see what the future holds for us hello everybody my name is shisha avasti and as you all know 2020 year has been very difficult and challenging year for all of us and u2.0 has been blessing in this like because of your tutorial i was able to dive deeper into myself make more human connections and have lots and lots of fun along with the learning what's better than that isn't it i have been a heartfulness practitioner for a decade and my volunteering experience with you to community happened to be an explorative journey to connect with like minded folks in my spiritual family and could see the vibe of working together with enthusiasm that has made all the way till here towards unleashing that infinite potential of the self Our lighthouse is a platform where you can express yourself, share your work. Um it is the voice of the youth. So if you have any artwork, any poetry, any articles or any such thing that you want to um share with the world, our lighthouse is a platform where you can do exactly that. Please reach out to us, send us your work and we would be more than happy to feature your work on this platform. Únete a la comunidad global joven de Heartfulness y libera tu infinito potencial. Join us at Youth Infinity, the global heartful youth community to unleash your infinite potential. Bergabunglah dengan kami di Youth Infinity, parti komunitas pemuda global untuk menunjukkan potensi kita terbatas anda. Join us at Youth Infinity, the global heartful youth community to unleash your infinite potential. Hola. Soy Adriana de Jalapa, México. Es tiempo de encontrar nuestro potencial infinito y entregarlo al mundo. Únete a nosotros en la comunidad global de jóvenes Youth Infinity. Hola, yo soy Isabel Albaeu, soy de São Paulo, Brasil. Y llegó la hora de alcanzar nuestro nuestro infinito potencial interno y traerlo para el mundo. Thank you for Youth Infinity and Global Heart for Humanity for unga som vill släppa loss sina oändliga möjligheter. Join us at the Youth Infinity, the Global Heart for Youth Community to unleash your infinite potential. Join us at Youth Infinity, the Global Heart for Youth Community to unleash your infinite potential. Hast du ganz alltså? बठिंडा शहर का रहने वाला आज तो सारे उन जोता जो था दिया हो सारे नल जुड़ो ते अपनी अंधविश्वास की पहचान हो ते इस समाज की सेवा ले इस मुख्य जागरूक करो 
नमस्कार मैं निधि झंवर बैंक ऑफ थाईलैंड से मूलतः एक भारतीय समय आ गया है कि हम अपनी असीमित क्षमताओं को स्वयं पहचाने और विश्व के सामने प्रस्तुत करें नमस्कार मोर नाम निर्मिता शर्मा मैं भारत देश प्रदेश मातृभाषा आम मजबूत उपलब्धि कर दिस यूथ इनिशिएटिव सिक्स टू क्रिएट अ पावरफुल यूथ मुवमेंट With communities such as holistic wellness, careers and entrepreneurship, science and spirituality, arts, music and intuitions, leaderships communities, just to name a few. I would like to invite some of our youth from across the globe to share their thoughts for the vision of this initiative and how we intend to take this beautiful initiative forward. Hi, uh this is Rushali from Indonesia. and uh, i'm currently studying clinical research at boston university in the united states um you know why is compassion so significant uh you know at the core of it all we're all human beings we crave love we crave kindness we crave affection but above all we crave happiness and if we agree that it's a common aim for each of us to strive to be happy compassion is that one main tool that can help us achieve that universal happiness um after the unpredictable year that we've had you know the youth as a whole we all need to pause and we need to rethink and we need to retrain ourselves um in order to be kinder more empathetic more understanding of one another and there in itself lies the key to compassion um we need to you know let go of our trivial egos our trivial um differences insecurities and we really need to collectively open our hearts to one another be generous learn to gauge each other's feelings on a deeper level um starting this compassion revolution you know by enabling the youth to go within is really the necessity of the hour and together i think let's leave this world a much better place than when we found it hi everyone My name is Icha and I'm joining you here today from India. Currently I work as a counselor and a medical educator for the Glendale group of schools in Hyderabad. Take a moment to think about the biggest lessons you've learned in life. Were the circumstances easy or were they difficult to surpass? More often than not it's the toughest situations that give us insight which really impact us. It's almost like learning how to swim because we're thrown into the deep end and we have no option but to invent ways to stay afloat. But eventually with guidance and with practice we learn how to swim. The obstacles in life present us with challenges for sure. But it also provides us an opportunity to get to know ourselves a lot better and from a more authentic place. I look for these gems in my life every day to broaden my horizons because it paves the way to grow and evolve in a novel and innovative way. Hey guys, my name is Karthik. I stay here in Canada and I'm pursuing my PhD from the University of Toronto. We all know that humanity has had a wonderful past which has manifested into the culturally diverse community we see around us. I believe most of us have also listened to numerous folklores and celebrated several religious and spiritual icons. that is all part of this history these aspects of a society have influenced not just the evolution of several civilizations but also our own belief system and hence our actions and inactions these cultures and traditions that we talk about today encompass not just the art forms and lifestyles but also and more importantly moral values ethics and principles of life that need to be admired and embraced 
So just like how the roots of a tree holds it firmly and keeps it grounded so as to weather any storm and to let it grow and proliferate as much as it wants, we the youth today need to stay connected to our cultural and traditional roots and to celebrate and preserve its richness and be more culturally aware. Hey guys, I am Mayra Vaz, I am from Colombia and I am very happy to join you today. Our societies are now facing the greatest challenges we face together as a civilization. We have to deal with a climate crisis, ecological collapse, and a difficult economy for most people. Access to clean water, food, housing, health, education, employment, stable income, truthful information are not guaranteed or are becoming increasingly difficult to find. These are basic conditions to live with dignity that we all deserve as human beings and that are required for our survival and evolution. Truth and justice should be predominant in everything we do individually and collectively so we can survive, advance and evolve together. Hello guys, my name is Mayank Sharma and I'm joining from Australia. I recently completed my master's in software engineering and software engineering is something that I love doing. For example, writing code, making computer applications or creating websites. Now software engineering is not easy. There are times where we have to spend countless amounts of hours to complete a project for a client, let's say. But it is that love that keeps driving me forward. Most of us have always misunderstood what love is. Sometimes we use love synonymously with other emotions and sometimes we tend to forget the true meaning of it. However, if we really think about it, we will always feel the need to ask this question. What is love? And why do we need it? I think love is the foundation of everything in this universe. It is the force that makes flower bloom and, you know, make the butterfly flap its wings. It is that life force which flows from the heart and makes everything and everyone connected in this universe. Nowadays, if we look around, we see everyone is so lost in their life in their day-to-day -day life that people have completely forgotten the connections and the symphony that the heart creates. I think it is time now that we need to reorient ourselves to our hearts and allow the river of love to flow again for global unity. Hello guys, my name is Marta and I'm from Ukraine. We are all human beings and we are the part of nature. Our mental and physical well-being depends on living as natural life as possible. According to World Health Organization, mental health plays an important role in achieving sustainable development goals. How can we bring more balance into the world? We need some basic tools to manage our mental well-being in these days and this age. Some simple ways, methods to look after our mental and physical bodies. So here are some tips to help you be in tune with nature and look after ourselves. So first one is exercises. Second one, it's good night sleep. Get the night, sleep at night. That's important. Be an early bird, walk up before sunrise and meditate. And fourth one, speak with love. And the last one, eat with love, with gratitude. Be thankful. And I'm willing to care about myself to bring more balance into my life and to the world. Thank you. Hey guys, this is Suraj from India, currently posting Bachelors in Technology. They say the world is your oyster, which in many ways means there are several opportunities. But what happens when it's all put to a hold? What happens when we lose insight of hope? To build a better future, one must visualize global progress. And in this process, it's important to understand that this shall only be achieved when there are values regarded to. Employment primarily means to put yourself to use. It is an individual choice to serve oneself and others. Through employment, one can not only empower themselves but also others. Believe in ourselves because that's where it all starts from. We are the future and we are what the world will be. Let's join hands and be the change. Hi, my name is Christina from Singapore. The pandemic has underlined the economic inequalities, which are characteristics to the predominant economic system. 
It has shown us the urgent need for a new vision of the economy centered on values of care, solidarity and justice. We can no longer ignore that a handful of individuals control more wealth than the rest of humanity. While millions of people are left out and denied the most basic conditions that would allow them to survive and thrive, to be content and contribute with our evolution. We can no longer ignore how that system is drying our resources and driving our Mother Earth yield. We urgently need a more inclusive and sustainable economy. Thank you. I'm Aruvi from Malaysia. Being born as brown, white, rich, poor, short, tall are all something that we have least control over. As we move into an era of sustainable development, respect and dignity is paramount to create the future that we all want. It is in our hands as future leaders to reaffirm the conviction of respecting a human being for who he truly is and including him wherever an opportunity lies. Let's stand as a united front towards creating a more inclusive, agile and sustainable future while making sure no one is left behind. As a young leader, I am ready to serve humanity on a path of respect and equality. Hi, my name is Diksha and I live in Germany. As a youth, we have high aspirations for excellence and meaningful change. Year after year, we set new goals and celebrate new milestones. How do we keep moving forward? While competition is sometimes used as a measure of success, what truly helps us reach new heights is collaboration. Teaming up across regions and disciplines can help us make the most of our networks, resources and opportunities. Really listening to each other can help us transcend our personal blind spots and make the most of each other's strengths. Most importantly, collaborating can teach us more about ourselves than working alone could ever do. Don't you think it's such a wonderful initiative if it's going to take us to a more heartful and happy future? On that note, I would like to move forward and hand the mic back to Ms. Veta Shriyans. Thank you so much, Bhavya. Thank you to all our supporters and practitioners across the globe. You guys are the real torchbearers and the future for the cause. All the best to all of you and all the best and congratulations for your new launch that is Youth in Finite Potential. Now, moving on to the next session, I'm definitely sure you all must be anxiously waiting for the star attraction for the National Conclave, Mr. Ronnie Screwala. Yes, my dear friends, we are going to have a fireside chat and a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with our President, Dr. Kamlesh D. Patel and Mr. Ronnie Skruwala. So to move further, I would like to introduce to all of you a very, very well-known personality, Mr. Ronnie Skruwala. It's finally time to welcome amongst all of us a very special dignitary whom you all must be eagerly waiting for. Our next guest needs no introduction. He has been listed in 100 most influential people in the world and he was, he was rated by Times Magazine. He has also been rated amongst the 25 Asia's most powerful people by Times Magazine. He pioneered cable television in India which is one of the biggest achievements for Indian industry, television and cable industry of course. He built a media conglomerate. UTV, establish another media content house and a creative content companies in movies and digital content called RSVP. Built a sports company called U Sports, spanning football, esports and kabaddi. Co-founded an online education company called Upgrad, a very, very well-known online education portal where more than 50,000 students have got trained under 
under the guidance of Upgrad platform. And this was not enough for him. Along with that, he also founded and a co-founder for Swadesh Foundation and voluntary organization which works for the upliftment of rural people and also works for the upliftment of youth. They, they try and help youth who need support in education, who need support in employment, who need support in entrepreneurship. They take the responsibility of building the careers and futures of this youth and they help them to relocate to a better geographical area where they can build their life in a better way. Such a philanthropist is Mr. Ronnie Skruwala. Here we present two silent change makers who actually are helping the community to grow. Mr. Ronnie Skruwala and Daji. We present the heart to heart conversation to all of you. May I welcome both of them to kindly talk to all of you for this National Education Conclave 2021. <music> Education is great, but without this moral, morally strong fiber or morally strong muscles, the youth will remain weaker because they have lost what we call their compass. The guiding force is not there. And even though many a times we feel that, yes, I should avoid this or I, I should do that, yet a willpower is lacking. And even if willpower is there, they don't have courage to go through. And this can come from inside only. Even if our parents tell us, don't do this or do this, we have hardly listened to them. And even if we listen to them, we will follow our own voice. If voice syncs with their voice, then it's great. So, uh, my main theme... Well, the power of the self is very, very, very critical. Yeah, 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 the power yeah. of the self is, is really self-conviction, self-confidence, self-everything. Mm. makes an incredible amount of difference. So, we have tried this in many schools, especially this process of relaxation. Because my Guruji, his strong belief is that they should not start meditation until they have completed 15 years. They need to focus on education and preparing themselves. So relaxation is just good enough to give them proper insight. So in many schools, we tell them, OK, look, as soon as the school starts with your prayer assembly, you can have this relaxation. And each time uh, one child can give these commands. So they also will develop confidence and others will follow. Right. At the end of the school, also before heading home, they need to relax a bit. And while going through this relaxation, they should reflect on you know, what was learned in each class. So they can have some ability to not only recollect, but contemplate on what they have learned. Yeah. Introspection is a very important part of that. Yeah. Otherwise, the learned knowledge will not be digested. So it will remain just superficial and you tend to forget very fast. And uh, you will not be able to correlate things, though you have learned, but this relating things will miss out. So one, have, one can take them deeper uh, into associating various topics. You'll be amazed to see that, you know, this process of relaxation, we encourage them to do it on their parents. That, you know, we request them to lie down, parents at the moment, just before going to sleep. And the children, instead of making them think that, imagine the energy is entering from Mother Earth, instead of that, when they touch the feet of their parents, now, Papa or Mommy, imagine the energy is coming from my hands. That's lovely. And then, lovely. and then the whole, before even you finish this whole process of relaxation, they'll be gone, they'll be sleeping. It's very potent. And this meditation, it's just one of the aspects of heartfulness way. 
we have done hardly 10 minutes of meditation just now but we do it for about 20 minutes or half an hour every day in the morning and we have another process of cleaning or rejuvenation we call it where we tend to remove our cognitive biases through sankalpa that may all these complexities and impurities that are gathered during daytime get an opportunity of escaping from my system and after that you are again you know re regaining your originality what what keeps us I, I think in confusion and sort of complexities are simply because of our cognitive biases that something you said and something I heard that creates uh, prejudice and when I uh, iron out all these things at the end of the day I tend to gain a lot uh, with this uh, removal of biases and also realize how irrelevant it is most of the time yeah, yeah. and and just before we go to sleep we connect with a prayer that my Lord or my God I don't know you I like to believe that you are there. <laughs> but I like to have your experience and I like to remain connected with you and please forgive me for all the mistakes that I have committed and help me strengthen my inner self so much so I did so that I don't repeat them ever again, see. And we put before this fact that, you know, we are still uh, slaves of wishes and that tends to block our progress and without your help I cannot move forward so we try to evoke the help with a sentiment of surrender or submission and we recognize what's the true goal of life and we also say what is blocking my progress towards that achievement of the goal so this in nutshell this is the practice we recommend you're, you're people. You're a strong believer of um, starting at a very young age from what I can see, which is important. I think that's, oh, that's even, not easy. Uh, even earlier, <laughs> if possible. My great grandmaster, he, he would say the right moment to start is the moment of conception. And I, for many years, I, I really kept breaking my head. How is it that, you know, there is no consciousness at that moment of conception as far as individual is concerned. But then the revelation come to me, came to me through him only that it's not your participation, but it's your parents' participation at the moment of conception that helps you start your journey. If they are mating like animals, then you have no chance of triggering a spiritual journey at the moment of conception. But if they are sattvic and prayerfully indulging in this act, then surely your spiritual journey will begin right then and there. So it's a very powerful thing and it's... I, I keep talking, sir. You, yes, no, no, you, you no, said, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, I think that's perfectly fine. But I think, you know, um, going back to your um, very strong ideology on, on just overall education and what really needs to happen there. I mean, if you had a, if you had a prescription or a wand, uh, what would we look at for our education system to really change? Because while we do look at it from the outside, I guess when it is in the inside to bring about that kind of change, um, sometimes takes a lot of patience and sometimes takes decades. And the point is, most of us from policymakers and whatever in the cycle, we look for a little bit of what I would call quick results. But something like this, nobody's thought through because you just feel whatever change will happen will take 10 to 20 years. Will I be around or will I be able to be part of the system or will I leave a legacy or will I leave something there? Mm -hmm. Well, well, simple thing that I have just already shared with you is how to inspire them to take interest and somehow intensify their abilities to observe. Later on, I give one, one small example. 
if you are living by a seaside and school is near the sea, children can go there every evening or every morning at a fixed time and put sticks. Oh, this is the water level on f first of the month. Water level on second day, you know, the third day, fourth day, and it goes on. The receding or acidic water levels will show them a lot and they'll start wondering children will say oh on this day water level was so far from our school another day it was almost touching our school then we have to make them think why then we have to indirectly give them example look at the moon it says look at the size of the moon now can you guys relate size of the moon and the levels of water like that we can come up with many small small experiments like flowers color of the leaves you know. training can start very early also you know if you are living in an apartment building somewhere in bombay perhaps and ask someone which side is the north they'll keep scratching their head because this ability to observe is missing. Similarly, make them curious about, as soon as they wake up, what kind of sounds they hear. Let's see if they heard some bird. How many birds did you hear? So they start having attention outward as well. See? Later on, as they grow, as parents, when we take children to our friend's place or relative's place, ask them what sort of color of the wall was there or how many sofas were there, what was that auntie or uncle wearing. Then focus on the subject of discussion we had and what do you think? Were we thinking in the right direction? Direct, our discussion was in the line of what you are thinking and what do you feel about it? See? So movies you watch together, get the gist of it in a very, it's, uh, get the essence of it from children. Okay. Then as they grow further, we have to make them think, okay, what sort of thoughts you have gone through during daytime? To grow further, what sort of feelings that has rocked you, moods, swings that you had during daytime? As they grow further on, maybe by 11, 12, make them analyze which side of the nostril you are breathing from. So this will give them slow idea of Surya Nadi and Chandra Nadi. And as they become more aware of breath, they will go more inward. The very attention, the attention that we pay to our breath pattern it takes us inward. It somehow uh, stimulates our vagus nerves and parasympathetic system and that calms you down totally. Not only that, as we meditate and do this rejuvenation in the evening, figure out whether you are absorbing energy or you are dissipating energy. Just as we have the cycles of taking breath in and breathing out, breathe in, breathe out. We have cycles also like of energy discharge and energy absorption. When you sit quietly, you'll be able to feel whether you are uh, absorbing or releasing. It's very easy to feel, feel that. Uh, but practice will make them very sharp from inside. And the next one will be uh, when we get rid of this uh, cognitive biases, and they start feeling the change that because of this prejudice that I have removed, what sort of a mental state I am in. So they are, I think you are sharpening them at a consciousness level, see? which is all actually, which is everything. The whole purpose of a spiritual adventure is, is simply this, that to how quickly we can adjust ourselves and move into superconsciousness or how quickly we get into a subconscious state. So widening our sphere 
of approach. And that's what Swami Vivekananda used to emphasize that the purpose of any spiritual practice is only this, to widen this consciousness. It's a life journey, but I guess right. for many, the moment of realization of when it enters, because if you haven't started that in your very young age, which I think is the normal case for most people, I think the realization of when you do want to step into that and then the discipline and the attention span to give it, I guess, remains the biggest challenge for a lot of people. Either there's a cathartic moment in your life that forces you to feel that way mm. or a sense of fatigue or irrelevance or lack of self-confidence and then you turn mm -hmm. to something. So it's almost, this is, it is a way of life, but for a lot of people, it's something you turn to because something happened and you feel the need for a few answers that you didn't have mm. while you were racing through life. But I think the good challenge of this would be to figure out how people can do it even when they feel they don't need it. Because for all yes. the people who do feel they need it, there's, I would sadly say 90% of the people don't feel they need it till they need <laughs> it. And I think that is a, that is a, that is a huge step forward in that because I think there is always that latent realization that it's there. It'll always nice. Everything that you say is beautiful, but in my prioritization of life, this will come when I have a cathartic moment or a moment where I want to find answers to happiness, answers to more depth. Uh, sadly so, sadly so. But we can somehow encourage them at earlier age through schools, I think. Uh, and um, emphasize, you see how uh, in medicine, how we vaccinate and prevent diseases ahead of time. That example will, 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 will float very well with many parents as well. Even Kabir, a few hundred years back, he used to say, Dukhme sumiran sab kare, sukhme kare na koi, sukhme sumiran jo kare, dukh ka hai ko hoi. So this is a vaccination philosophy that if you can balance your mind before, why will calamity come and strike you with stress? You are well prepared, you are well cushioned from all around. And that's what Gita's message is also, that once you have this sthita pragya state of consciousness, you are prepared for life. Well, actually you improve your life because your sense of attention span, your sense of focus and concentration goes up. And frankly, today more than yeah. ever, doing less for more is, is pretty much, should be the mantra for most people, but actually we all end up doing more for less. <laughs> Efficiency is sold out. I started this meditation while I was a student in pharmacy college and I simply stumbled upon it. It has helped me in my student career, student days, in my family life, in the business world. And most astonishing thing I found and most beautiful and striking is this. That when I have to go to work, going to pharmacy, and I meditate in the morning for about 30 minutes, of course, you'll have some thoughts, stray thoughts here and there, some thoughts about what you're going to do next during your, uh, you know, uh, next eight hours. The best thing that happens is you are eliminating what not to do. You have about seven, eight projects in front of your mind. And you, even before strike or discuss, you are able to remove it from your mind that I will not do this. Imagine, you had to, otherwise you would have had eight, nine meetings. And you are just sitting for 20 minutes or 30 minutes and you are able to get rid of more than 50% of things that you have wasted your time with. So that way it is very fascinating. And my PhD research, I mean, this is also, I was guided through meditation for nine months i struggled coming to conclusion but when i was one day meditating it just answer came and i said just afterward i finished the whole thing in two hours yeah i think you were extremely blessed to find the right people who gave you right advice maybe at the right time but also yeah, yeah. equally blessed to accept them but um, and that's also a good situation to put in front of people 
uh, on a more sustained basis, I think in the ecosystem, right? I mean, because I think people need a little bit of endorsement, a little bit of agreeing. Some people feel naturally there was an intent, you felt somebody said mm. things that really the penny dropped for you and then it changes your life or whatever else. But for our other people, I think if we can bring in also a sense of endorsement on a continued basis, it's important in that early stage when you feel it's a good thing, but is it going to be a life-changing thing? You know? I mean, I, I, when, we, when we work with our children in, in our rural schools, one of the things I found out outside of the normal things that we all do, two magical things we found was when we set up a library in each uh, school. Okay. And they don't have a library because the only library, and it only struck me because we were sitting in the principal's office and one child came and said, so one book, and he said, not now, go away. And then I realized he had locked up the books. And I just asked him that, but what's the criteria? And the library means a child should be able to come peruse, not be so specific, this is the book you need kind of situation. And second is, isn't lock a very psychological uh, barrier for reading and pursuing your own interest. I mean, I've got an interest, but I've got to seek permission before I can do that. So that kind of struck a good chord with him. And then we opened about 500 libraries in some of our different villages. That was life-changing in those schools, absolutely. And we said, told the teachers and the principals, you don't have to man this library. Only the kids will look after this library. The books go, it's their problem. Let them take the books home. So everyone was paranoid, but we said, we're putting the books, just let them take their books home. They'll have a conversation with their parents. The parents will ask them, where did this come from? Why are you reading this? What do you want to do? Mm. I think that was one change moment. And the other one was really when we started getting into counseling, which I think in rural, I mean, you know, we're all blessed again, going to some sense of education system where people keep asking us, what do you want to do when you grow up? But I think I've found that 90% of the kids, nobody asked them that question of what do you want to do when you grow up? Mm -hmm. And just that sense of, because at the end of the day, as much as we are who we are, I think we are also a sum and substance of our choices. The choices we make is about really, if we have to look at all our, uh, our life record or do what we want to do, it's about the choices we made. Mm. And I think that's a very important part in the education system that I like to see change is this whole question of ability to be able to understand the importance of choices. How do you make the choice? The choice. Choices? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, making a right choice. That means to filter out many things that you can avoid that can be harmful to your growth. Yeah. yeah. I'm headbent on this idea that unless your heart guides you, inspires you from within, no amount of course and from outside can influence this youth. Youth means a lot of stamina, a lot of courage, a lot of energy. It's going in some directions. The direction has to be in a proper, it has to be properly channelized. You see, I was very much influenced by this book by James Allen, As a Man Thinketh. He compares these thoughts and ideas with seeds. You can have a forest when these seeds are thrown here and there. But a masterful gardener, he would place the seeds in the right place at the right time and, and create a beautiful garden. Our thoughts are like that. If they remain scattered, we create a chaotic life. If the thoughts are guided properly, and how are you going to guide your thoughts properly? Unless you pause a bit, reflect on it, and then decide, see. The outcome of your thoughts will be your actions, and the outcome of your actions will be the results. And when we see the results, we remain horrified. We always think back, I wish I had done that, and I wish I had done that, and I wish I had done that. All these regrets will pop up later when we see the results. But why don't you think ahead of time? You will, it will save us a lot of time and money and energy if we only can filter all that is unnecessary and strike out or remain focused on what matters. If I have to study a particular subject, go out with full in intensity in that direction. See, Don't look back. 
just because certain things is paying more but your interest in another subject is greater follow what your heart says so clarion call if not for today i mean it has always been like that that listen to your heart's voice and follow your heart and see the success success just follows itself another way of looking at this idea of regulating your mind is it's a logical argument that can you be happy i mean the goal of every life human beings as well is to become happy can you be happy with a restless mind despite of having everything you can't be and how are you going to arrive at a peaceful environment which is opposite of restlessness where you can enjoy your happiness can you dream of peace without harmony within and outside and can you arrive at that without having a contemplative mind so the next question would be how can i arrive at a contemplative mind that can create harmony and peace leading to happiness then we say oh i can remain contemplative if i can focus my mind and you can focus your mind only when your mind is regulated many people they say oh my mind is such an enemy it's not in my control but there is nobody a better friend than your own mind if it is well regulated and we have this ancient tradition never explored we everybody talks about it but never anyone attempts to meditate dhyana is a fundamental thing see patanjali's yoga sutras they all heavily emphasize on dhyana leading to samadhi and samadhi is all about consciousness so one has to make meditation by hook or crook a part of life if you want to arrive at happiness you join all these dots then you'll realize the significance of meditation i urge every younger members to try this and see how meditation can revolutionize even simple things like when you graduate and say oh which company to join which work should i follow whom to marry what to eat what to cook all these basic questions can be answered without any confusion once your mind is clear your heart is clear it will be a wonderful life otherwise you may be very well educated but you, if you remain confused your mind will misguide you so the need to clarify your mind your heart so much that at every given moment you get the right answer i guess um, this is a very important conference and it talks and highlights the fact of how going with your heart is very important and obviously how can one fault that because that is the starting point of everything that you go with but i believe today in the education system um, we need to be have the ability to be able to analyze us we need to have the ability to be able to to see uh, and have that guiding force that we can follow our heart or we can follow our mind today i would say being a more pragmatist um, i think we look at education as an event that we go through in life there's school and then there's college and then there's university so we kind of it's self bracketed in our world in our mind in our life cycle so to speak and it's almost like when you finish that it's like one part of your life is over but actually it's the one part of your life that's starting fresh so i'm a firm believer today that you know lifelong learning in every sense of the word and i don't mean lifelong degrees and lifelong curriculum and but if you are on a journey of lifelong learning you won't look at education as an event and you won't look at education as formal you look at it as informal as much as formal and if you sort of break that up in your mind then you will understand that so much of what you derive from education why some people take education and go far and some people don't because it's what you take out of it it's really what what's your self realization and the self part so i'm someone who's very strong about you know self conviction self confidence and education has made you a self clear self confident self person and a, and a self conviction about yourself 
it's not about others because that's what's going to see us through life. So I think my first message is really education is not an event. Lifelong learning and not in a learning of degrees and curriculum, but just an ever-changing sense of a highest level of curiosity, which I think will stand us in good stead. And third, the realization that all of us are a product of the choices that we make. And therefore, if learning and education can allow us to fine tune our gut feeling about the choices we make, it'll be so much more rewarding. And lastly, I would say an appeal to a lot of people. I think we all put too much pressure on ourselves. Some of the stress that we create, it starts at the young age. You know, and I think part of you know, this conference talks about meditating and, and the element of importance and following your heart. But I think at the end of it, we do create a lot of our own pressures. So how do we lower those pressures and exacting standards? That again, to me, comes a lot from self-conviction. Because if I feel I've, I have to only first be satisfying myself and my own, and I can be my best critic, my ability to achieve more with a clarity of thought that I'm accountable rather than I'm, because 90% of the time, I think we spend too much time doing things what we think other people would like us to do versus what we want to do. And I just hoped in my early days in my life that part of education taught me this, taught me the importance of choices, taught me the importance of discipline, taught me the importance of focus, taught me the importance of self, along with many other things that I learned when I was learning and educating myself. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Ronnie and dear Daji, for this very absorbing conversation on education, youth and campus. From here, it is yet again time for us to absorb ourselves through the power of music. Here is before you a very soulful rendition.
it gives me immense pleasure to introduce to all of you our next very prominent speaker. We have amidst us Mr. Anil Kumar SG, the founder and CEO of Samunati. Anil Kumar's company Samunati deals in the financial services in private sector. It was established in 2014. Samunati offers financial, co-financial and non-financial solution to marginal, small and medium holders including farmers, agri-enterprises and wholesalers and retailers. Samunati stands for collective growth, collective prosperity and collective elevation and its journey of five years it was exclusively focusing on the field of agriculture and allied activities. It has its presence in more than 54 value chains spread over 19 states. Samunati works with over 500 farmers, producer organizations that are collectively serving about 4 million predominantly smallholder farmers across India. Anilji's career started way back 28 years ago when he started his career in the field of rural development, retail and agri-banking. He stated his career with Canra Bank and then joined ICICI Bank. Over the last decade, Anil's work was focused on creating newer institutions across the country and operating in the financially excluded markets with corresponding support structure for their capacity building. Prior to Samunati, Anil was the co-founder and trustee of IFMR Trust and the CEO of IFMR Trust Rural Channels. Anil holds Masters in Management from Asia Institute of Management, Manila. He also holds Masters in Business Administration from Symbiosis Institute of Management, Pune. The good news is, recently Anil was awarded by Economic Times for the excellent startup initiative which he was awarded for his contribution in the field of agriculture and rural development. We are very happy that Mr. Anil Kumar from Samunati has joined us for National Education Conclave 2021. Over to you Anilji, we all are waiting to listening to your talk related to the agri field. Namaste, greetings to everyone. It's wonderful to be part of uh, this uh, event, which in my view is the need of the time. Reimagining university education with a heart-centered approach. And the outcome of it is creating a large set of purposeful youth. The topic resonates a great deal with my own experience. I'm sure there are very many eminent speakers, erudite speakers who would be elaborating many aspects, this, many aspects of this topic. But I'm a banker, I'm a debit credit man, have been working in the rural and agri space uh, almost my entire career. So I thought I will bring in a perspective from a person who has seen the professional life in the trenches, as they say, in the rural hinterlands of this wonderful country. And I have also been a beneficiary of uh, this wonderful heartfulness practice. I stumbled into this system accidentally in 1993, and the last 27 years have been a phenomenal investment into who I am as a person. So I'll be sharing my views with this wonderful set of people who are listening to this from the dimension of a banker who has spent a lot of time in the rural and agri space and a person who also has had the benefit of the heartfulness practice. So when I looked at 
the entire space of rural and agri three four things came in as a as a striking reality first and foremost it's the place where we see the culmination of the real life with the day to day challenges as they say where the rubber meets the road and i have been fortunate to come across a large number of people who are silently and anonymously working to make the lives of these markets these rural households a little better and quite often these are the people who have had the best of the education these are the people who have gone to premier educational institutions and could have done very many things in their life with the pedigree that large names in terms of the academic world bring in with it but i often used to wonder what what triggers these people to make this switch from pursuing a career to make more wealth to to you know uh, chase the claim and fame that often is an aspiration to get into this premier academic institutions and one thing that was a striking striking semblance striking reality in all of this is these are the people who have a well integrated mind and heart often right so i was wondering how, how do we create more people who have this alignment this integration of the mind and heart take for example the the uh, un sdgs the united nations uh, you know, social development goals they are for many people a statistic a number right and the 17 goals each of them represent a segment of this mankind a segment of this wonderful planet which needs to be nurtured which needs to be taken care of for very many people it is also another initiative of a world body they are indifferent but for a limited set of people this is not a static this is not a data point it is a mirror that is being held in front of us as humans how can we respond to this situation as people who have inherited this natural resources who have inherited this planet in trust for the future generations and hence compels them to act is one dimension second dimension is this data point or this static whether you take zero hunger or whether you take poverty as a number for this set of inspired souls this is not another data point it is not acceptable that a large majority of our people go hungry every night it is not acceptable that we are depleting the natural resources at the cost of our future generations these are the people these inspired souls are the ones who have brought in their academic prowess with an intention to become more human more humane beings and that integration of the mind and heart is what was the common trait in many of these inspired souls that i have come across in my life in these markets that you know i have been exposed to for the last 20 years silently anonymously tirelessly working towards making the mankind and planet a better place to live can we make this number which is insignificant small number a lot much more than what we have now and how do we go about doing it and in my view the heartful campus is a wonderful opportunity to make this happen because it is in these universities where we can mold future generations it is in these academic institutions where the future of this planet is being nurtured and as the vedic saying goes vidya dhati vinayam knowledge education leads to humility humility for what humility to understand that we are humans to understand that we need to be humane in our qualities and what are the other human qualities compassion love how can we respond to our external environment in a way where it is aligned to our inner environment of being human beings that is what humility in my view in my understanding and how do we culminate the 
the prowess of intellect that gets triggered, that gets lighted by the wonderful academic institutions who are part of this initiative to each one of us connecting to our inner light, the source of our light that makes us take care of our inner environment. That's the culmination of what a heartful campus is all about. And what have we at Samunati got to do with this? You might be wondering. We at Samunati are working with an intention to make market for smallholder farmers. And who are these smallholder farmers? The ones who own less than two acres of land. And from numbers perspective, they represent more than 50% of the farmers in this country. On the other dimension, this country also has the demographic dividend. A large number of young people going through the academic institutions. And how do we make sure that this large set of young people who are going through the academic institutions resonate with the plight of the smallholder farmers? How can we make it happen? And it is in this context that we at Samunati see an important role that we can play in, in this initiative of Heartfulness Institute's Heartful Campus. Can we bring in agriculture as a, as a portion of curriculum, as an option, as, as, as an elective, so that people understand what agriculture is all about. People understand what does it take for a farmer to go through what he goes through to produce what he produces or what she produces. And having a good understanding of what agriculture is would be a wonderful foundation as they get into their mainstream activities as bankers or as investment bankers or as entrepreneurs. So can Samunati play a role with many of you, the academic institutions, in making sure that there is a good understanding or a accurate understanding of what agriculture is all about and what a smallholder farmer is all about. The other way that we can look at collaborating with you is in creating agri-entrepreneurship as a cell. Because these are the young minds, when kindled with an inspiration from the heart, can take up entrepreneurship as a way to change the world. And we at Samunati have already launched an online platform for agri-entrepreneurship called Samaram, in which we provide all support structures that are required for entrepreneurs to keep going with their vision of whatever chosen field that they have, they have looked at working. In addition, we can also look at launching total immersion programs for your students, total immersion program for your faculty and your you know, interns in the field of agriculture. And last but not the least, we can also come out with specific programs to create awareness about the technologies in agriculture. So we at Samunati see this culmination of academic institutions with Heartfulness Institute giving the base, the, you know, the fulcrum of engaging with the future generation of this country and Samunati focused entirely on agriculture, being able to work with a large number of smallholder farmers, the potential that we have as a wonderful opportunity for the academia, the Heartfulness Institute, and a private sector player coming together to do something meaningful in life. And offering this future generation, the youth of this country, an opportunity to do something meaningful in life, making them purposeful youth as a generation is not only inspiring, but if you see, it is also a responsibility that we have for the future generations. And increasing the top of the inspired souls coming with the academic expertise and in addition being inspired by the heart is something that we can leave as our legacy for the future generations to come in. We at Samunati are proud to be associated with Heartfulness Institute. We are thankful for the opportunity that we have been given to be part of the Heartful Campus. And we assure you that we would be able to do everything that is possible to make the Heartful Campus a meaningful initiative. And we will play our role. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And May all be blessed by
our creator thank you that brings us to the next set of heartful campus awards which we are very excited to present the winners for the next category today are for stellar contribution to a heartful education the jury is pleased to confer the heartful professor award 2020 upon professor milind patre of dr vishwanath karad mit world peace university pune namaste on behalf of executive president mit world peace university shri rahul karad and vice chancellor dr n t rao i feel humbled and extremely honored for receiving this prestigious award from heartfulness and i humbly dedicate this award to founder of mit group of institutions revered professor dr vishwanath dikarad sir do physiologically heart is situated below the head but the journey from head to heart is not a downward journey spiritually it is an upward and uplifting journey heart centric approach is the need of the day in all spheres of life and more so in the field of education to talk about great ideas and noble thoughts is one thing but how to get there thank god heartfulness has answered to the basic dilemma of human life how to get there let's move from head to heart from the head of the department to the heart of the department and possibly one day from the head of the state to the heart of the state thank you so much revered daji for encouraging this journey towards heart thank you wishing dr milind patre an even greater success in 2021 for stellar contribution to a heartful education the jury is pleased to confer the heartful professor award 2020 upon dr harsha r kantode of the gondia homeopathic medical college and hospital gondia actful pranam to all of you my heart is full of gratitude and i am very very happy for this award After following this meditation, I have seen that lot of improvement is seen in the student. That uh, they become very uh, tolerant, they become calm, they become obedient, and they like to work for the society. Develop control over the anger, over the anxieties which we usually come across in our day-to-day -day life. Becomes empathetic, they become compassionate, and some sensitivity develop in them. While dealing with the patient, they become very soft and very kind-hearted. In short. meditation help them to become a good human being which is a doctor need so we recommend this meditation to all the patients in our college and planning to spread this grace in the whole society as this is the only way which can bring peace and harmony everywhere which is the need of the hour thank you very much wishing dr kantode an even more successful 2021 for stellar contribution to a heartful education the jury is pleased to confer the heartful educator award 2020 upon professor nandita singh shukla of the punjab university chandigarh in gratitude i on behalf of punjab university accept this award as a recognition of the effort of our team of volunteers students research scholars teachers faculty members our preceptors from the heartfulness uh, tri city heartfulness chandigarh it's their dedicated effort because of which we have been given this award i am thankful to professor op katare Uh, a senior academician and a preceptor of sahaj marg who has been guiding and motivating us 
all throughout this journey. I wish the world learns heartfulness way to become a better world. Thank you so much. Wishing Professor Shukla an even greater success in 2021. for stellar contribution to a heartful education the jury is pleased to confer the heartful educator award 2020 upon dr ruchika yadav of the kr mangalam university gurugram greetings to all i am feeling honored and privileged for receiving this award i am highly thankful to the vice chancellor of the university professor aditya malik pro vice chancellor professor pushpalata tripathi deputy registrar international affairs ms manvi aroda dean school of management and commerce and dean academics professor vijayanand dube and above all thank you so much wishing dr ruchika yadav an even greater success in 2021 for stellar contribution to a heartful education the jury is pleased to confer the heartful educator award 2020 upon dr anita singh of the tikaram post graduate girls college sonipat naam vid master i feel very humble honored and overwhelmed with joy to receive this prestigious award thank you wishing Dr Anita Singh an even greater success in 2021 for stellar contribution to a heartful education the jury is pleased to confer the heartful youth ambassador award 2020 upon Himanshu Jain Shrey Gupta, Ayush Maheshwari, Gopal Gupta, Shorya Gupta of the Lakshmi Narayan Institute of Technology, Bhopal. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. So, I am Ayush Jain. I am Gopal Gupta, Shorya Gupta, Ayush Maheshwari, Shrey Gupta. From NCT Happiness Club, I am here to thank you all. We are very pleased and humbled to have this award. It's very hard to put this feeling into words. Alan City Happiness Club is not only a club but a family which is initiated by the words of Daji. We are blessed with his blessing and a big thank to him because without his blessing this club would not came that far. We extend our thanks to the pillars of our Alan City Happiness Club, Mrs. Sangeeta Das ma'am, Mr. Prabhakar Das sir, Dr. Ramesh Vastav sir and Mr. Anupam Chokse sir who always cheered and guided us without any obligations. Once again a warm thanks to all and this award will motivate us to achieve more success in the future. Heartfulness meditation is not just a meditation it's an emotion for us this practice helps us to know ourselves better and make our mind peaceful and relaxed in this practice we are able to connect our inner soul the divine light that we feel in our inside helps us to stay motivated focused and positive we all like to thank heartfulness for this beautiful experience wishing all of them an even greater success in 2021 friends after a riveting session today we now take leave from all of you and look forward to your presence in today evening session so please join us today evening at 5 pm for a very enthralling final session of day 2 of this conclave <music>